Yeah, in the in the, the Manchester scene and all the stuff that was happening in Manchester at the time, like Factory and you know Joy Division, whatever, um, and all the the Buzzcocks and whatever, um, Morrissey didn't fit in at all, and that was kind of that was what was kind of quite interesting about him. He actually didn't fit in. He, he was he's just very eccentric and um, and a very neurotic kind of guy. And I mean, the first time I saw him, I think he just taken in a, what he what, the proposal for writing a book to Tony Wilson, head of Factory, my manager at that time. Um, and I, I think he was confused and it was, it was like a confused, uh, angst-ridden young man. And he wore, the, he, he actually wore a long raincoat, which is, you know, came, became a cliche in Manchester for people who went to see Joy Division gigs. And he was very much like that, except he was, o he was always alone. And so he just didn't fit in at all with what was going down. And, in my earlier career, I was I was in like a, an imitation punk band, uh, which we, we called ourselves Ed Banger and the Nosebleeds, which I dreamed up whilst serving petrol one night, and it was kind of meant to be funny. But they you know, anyway. So, and I was in that band for um, six seven months, and we did a single, and then <clears throat> I got very disillusioned with punk, um, and as it became more and more, more and more mainstream and fake, and I left the Nosebleeds. And it was only years later, it really was a long, long time later, I, f I discovered that Billy Duffy had joined the Nosebleeds after I'd gone, and that, and that Morrissey had joined the Nosebleeds after I'd left. You know, I, didn't even, I didn't know any of this at all, because I, when I left the Nosebleeds, I really did leave you know, the whole thing. I left punk completely, because it was... It, it, basically, everyone had sold out, as far as I could see. So, but it was interesting for me. When I first heard the Smiths, which wasn't until for a, wasn't for a while after they, you know, it wasn't they've been going for quite a while. By the time I heard them, I, I don't assimilate new stuff very quickly. I'm afraid I'm not very active on the scene. So when I eventually did hear them, I, I thought they were kind of a, a bit of, a, of, a, of a, an, an anachronism because it it was it, it, it didn't fit. It didn't make sense, and I, I couldn't see where on earth they were coming from. And which impressed me because I just thought, well, it, it's, they're obviously not coming from Joy Division Factory. The Factory stable was very, very much had an identity which influenced so many bands. I mean, you know, everybody basically, and uh, and they just the Smiths came from nowhere, and and ha they were very, very distinctive, and they had very quickly, very almost immediately, a, a very strong identity of their own, which I recognised, and I thought it was very interesting, but I didn't see. I didn't realise how, how big that was going to become. I just didn't see it at all. I just thought they were interesting and weird, you know. How, where did that come from? I think the Smiths was pop music, and I think it was a very pure, like, like classical pop music used to be. And I, think that, I think that's down to Johnny. I think Johnny approaches writing songs very much as pop songs. And he's a, he's a, he's a genius at, at that, and his chord sequences and the, the, harp, the harmonic progressions that he develops and the structures that he uses, they're, they're just great. They're, they're like pieces of classical pop music. You know, they're, they're, they're gems. You know, I, they're better than anything I could do in, in that genre. That's his genre. That's his, that's his speciality. It's great. And when, when the Smiths split, um, I, I, I really wasn't that aware of it. I wasn't taking that much notice because so much was happening, you know, for me at the time anyway. And and I'm always really completely involved in the Drudge column, which is my thing, and I do that all the time, you know, 24/7. So I don't take that. Much, you know, I, I certainly didn't dream that I would ever become involved with with you know musically with Morrissey in any way. It never occurred to me. So it really was quite a shock and quite quite a, you know a surprise. And you know, which which really was was why my approach was kind of well, it's just a, a little thing on the side, you know, just a little thing. I'll just try it, you know, just to see. And that was my approach, very much as an experiment. Well, no, I, ne I never dreamt of, you know, I, I didn't see where I would fit in any of that. And also, I was surprised that Johnny and Morrissey split because it was such a perfect partnership. For that to split was it was unthinkable, you know, that was crazy. <laughs>